so I'm doing a wee bit of a hill tuck on here as part of the surgery that's going on in this area here so I just need to reduce the profile of here because this is going to come further down and meet with this bit of rocky cliff face here so there is a MDF ridge under here I've got to trim that back and I'm sort of going to retain this piece here and pull it down further over hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road so as you can probably see I've actually moved on to yet another project on the layout so for those who watched my 2023 plans for the station road layout this year there were two main areas that i was going to tackle this year and one of these areas i've already started on so with that video i got rather inspired to actually make a move on one of those areas and of course strike while the iron is hot so it relates to the area at the end of the raised goods yard section where the hill rises up and then there is the two tunnel portals so it's effectively looking at transitioning the other end of that raised goods yard area so that kind of really gets things underway to getting this whole area completed so as i mentioned of course in the 2023 plans for this particular area it means a lot of surgery and ripping out of some of the old landforms and things that i built many years ago and of course modifying some of the existing landforms that i'd also built so when i progressed in this area i really needed to revisit one of the particular components that i'd modeled many years ago and that was the reservoir up on the hill so there is a little bit on the actual hill structure ripping that all out and starting to build up a new landform but then the focus soon shifted to this reservoir which i have always wanted to actually redo and remodel so with the remodeling of this reservoir it also means revisiting the resin pour that i'd originally done and actually going with a different method so i soon discovered there was quite a bit in this content so what i've done is divided this video into two once again so this particular video focuses on actually starting to establish the hill forms and also looking at the modifications required around this reservoir and then the accompanying video which there is a link in the top corner for that focuses directly on the actual resin pour for this reservoir because that involved quite a bit of work in its own right so i think without further ado let's just carry on with what i got up to So it's looking a little bit different at the moment. So there's been quite a considerable amount of surgery in here. And I first ripped out the old hill that was in there. And I didn't film that process, but I did take a few snapshots just for the record. So what I've had to do is build up a wooden frame that's supported by vertical struts and then start building up layers of this high density foam so this is all a lot more excess than I actually need because it's always a good idea of course to build up hill forms much more than what the eventual form of the hill would look like so this can then start to be carved back and carved into various shapes so we had our lift out section in here which was the existing section there's going to be a new lift out section for in here and i have actually 
adjusted the original form and just in a little bit we'll switch over to a different angle we'll place these components in here so you can get an idea of how it's taking shape so this is the existing hill form which is a lift out section which I made many years ago and no these are not tunnels in here it's just simply the way I constructed this using bits of off cut to fill in space underneath so what I've done is shaved off a different contour to this section here and if I look back at how it used to be it was a bit higher and sort of plateaued out a little bit as well so I've adjusted this but what I'm also planning on doing is redoing this water reservoir up here as well because although it looked good when I first did it a few years back it's kind of deteriorated and I used the Woodland Scenics water mix which is a product that you heat up in a pot and then pour it in and then it sets but if I go back and look at the old video and at the time I recommended it I would not recommend it now certainly not for larger masses of water like this it's shrunk and started to crack and it's sort of sunken in around the edges and it generally looks pretty naff so what the plan is is I'm actually going to realign this channel or water channel through here and actually bring it out in more of a straight line rather than looking a little bit like a dried up creek add some depth to it I'm actually going to continue this bit of stone wall and it's going to run around on both sides either side so it's going to be more man-made looking rather than sort of how it currently is at the moment so I think I'll need to do this first and actually sort this out because this may need a little bit further adjustment in terms of the contour for around here so that's what the plan is for this section here so taking a look at what I've built up so far in this area we've got a couple of layers of the styrene which of course are mounted to that framework that I made that's all tucked in underneath now this area is fixed so that is permanently fixed into place we've got a spot here for a removable section and then of course this will be removable as well so it will allow me to gain a reasonable amount of access under here if I need to do so so here is the new road which is starting to rise up and then just simply curves off into the back scene and this gives me the opportunity to sort of hide this bit of road whether it's trees and other things like that scenic type treatments that will disguise that there will be a little bit of a landform on this side as well which I haven't made yet that'll be made out of some further additional high density foam so it was a little bit complicated actually working this all out so as per a lot of other methods that I use I simply make up cardboard templates of how it's all going to work so this is made up of a few sections and I simply create these templates first and fit them in to the best ability that I can and then that gives me a good indication of how it's going to work and then once I've got this cardboard template then I can then tra trace this out onto some 3mm MDF and the 3mm is great for being able to force it into undulations but it's still quite solid so once I'd created that then I could build that up so there was a template here which was for this section here of the back scene support which ran in here and this is out of 10 mil MDF through here so it's a little bit more solid and then this is all glued down and it's well and truly anchored 
and then of course there was another cardboard template which was to start looking at how the shapes of foam were going to be cut out so that's the cardboard template for that because I had to of course work out where that rock face was actually coming around the edge of the road so that's the method and there are other videos where I think I've gone through the process of making up cardboard templates so I've started working on some of the sections that are fitting into this lift out piece now what I've done is actually in order to sort of match up a few layers I've actually used just some normal polystyrene don't recommend it to be honest for this type of thing because it is horrendously messy and it is nowhere near as easy to cut as the high density foam but I've used it here because we can get this level through here and of course this is just really a supporting layer of styrene so that's not really well it's it's got no scenic treatment on it really apart from a little area in here then we've got another layer <laughs> of this thinner normal polystyrene and that's going to be stacked on top of that and then a, another layer on top of that which is of course the thicker high density foam and that is at the meeting the height of this existing bit of hillside so I think I've provided enough excess foam to be able to start carving the shapes in this hillside so as I sort of mentioned I'm going on the basis that maybe this was a spur or a ridge from a much larger hill off in that direction and it sort of comes down on a bit of an angle so it, it, it's almost curving like this and heads down and of course we're going to have a little bit extra hill form down here which is just slightly off the camera. So in terms of the farm that's going here it's quite a tight area but what I thought would be a good scenario is that maybe this is just the the far extremities of the farm that obviously extends way out beyond in this direction so we're only just seeing a wee tiny edge or snippet of the farm so I've kind of mutilated my homestead or farm house building which is not so bad that it's not beyond repair so it took me a little bit to get it off the original base so the idea is that this homestead is actually going to go around about here somewhere and it'll of course be on this level slightly lower level and it kind of faces where this road's going to be so obviously this is all going to be carved back and more of a sloping hill here now in terms of the farm access obviously there would be some kind of farm road that would head into this area so the farm road's going to be back here somewhere and actually come in from around behind this homestead now what we've got here is the barn that we created and i made this many years ago and it is a semi-derelict barn which worked out quite well so I definitely want to be able to use this and it's got some lighting in it and it also has some people frolicking in the hayloft which you can't really see there but the barn I'm thinking of positioning here which would actually be at a slightly higher level than the homestead and of course this would actually be curved down so all of this landform is really a lot of this is actually going to be cut back to be honest there's, there's w way more excess foam than what I actually really need so but as I said it's always good to have more rather than less and then there's this little wee farm cottage too which I'm thinking maybe of putting here and this would actually be lower down 
so we, we're really sort of getting down to a much lower level if you can imagine this coming down here somewhere and this may be positioned there I'm not set on that so our farm access will come in and through here and it will come down into a farmyard area here where there will of course be ploughs and tractors and all sorts of bits and pieces and then of course being near the road on this side here this is going to be the boundary for the farm and the farm is going to be more out this way and off into the distance so obviously my back scene here will incorporate that the fact that there is a farm that goes off into the distance so in terms of the hill contour for this existing section where I'm going to redo this water channel through here is that may drop down a little bit further and then it will actually create a slightly more gradual drop through this area between all these buildings and then sort of plateau out a little bit for this cottage down here and yeah I, I, I think it's going to work so I think the first thing I've got to do as I mentioned is I'm going to get into this water channel here and sort that out and what I'm actually going to use for this channel is I think I'll build a MDF trough that's going to go in here with an MDF base and make sure that that's completely watertight because what I'll do is use a two-part resin instead of this Woodland Scenics hot water mix that was used in the past. Right so I've started hacking out a new channel for the water and of course you can just see here the remains of where it used to go so I think it sort of ran around in quite a sharp corner there and of course it was a lot more shallow so one of the things of course that came to my benefit of was the fact that this is layers of styrene so I actually just simply took off the top layer in this shape so we've actually got a nice flat bed here so that will be of great importance when it comes to pouring the resin because it really does need to be flat for it to work effectively or well, at least that's my understanding anyway so I've hacked out the entire water component from the original build and interestingly I managed to pretty much rip out this drainage component in one piece and as you can see that that's the molten woodland scenics water mix which is the plastic beads or resin beads that you melt in a pot and I didn't tint this so that is the actual color that you end up with so there's no tint in there so you, you do end up with this sort of amber kind of pale tint to it as well so yeah that's the the old stuff there and of course that sat in there so I've just popped a small chunk of styrene in here just for a support because as I mentioned what I'm doing is laying a MDF foundation for the new channel and some MDF sides so the first step was to once again create a cardboard template that could tuck into this area and I probably can't fit this template in here any longer but this is basically where I started out is creating this card curve template here that gave me a guide to cut out this channel I've since gone in and reapplied some stonework to the inside because that essentially got destroyed when I was ripping this out so once I had this cardboard template worked out then I was able to recreate that with some MDF so this is our MDF base and I've just used some 5mm MDF and I've also gone over it with some splatterings of spray paint so first went down a grey primer and then I've sort of gone over it with some different tones of spray green just from a rattle can and that's sort of a, a general base 
for the waterway so this now just slots in here and we now have this good firm and flat piece of level channel bed here and I've got some MDF 3 mil MDF that's going to be wrapped around here that is currently sitting under some weights with more of the stonework applied to it and once I've got these walls and and so forth then I'll do a little bit further treatment in terms of the bed of this waterway in terms of maybe lightening up the edges a bit having a little bit of grime around the foot of the stonework as well and then it's pretty much ready because once I've done that then I'll seal it all in and I'm planning on using some Mod Podge to seal it all in. I may have to go around these corners and gaps in here with just a silicon sealer of some sort because we certainly don't want this leaking out anywhere. But what I've also been working on while doing this at the same time is creating a wee small test bed where I'm actually going to try out the resin beforehand and just see how it goes. So I've now installed the stonewall edging and of course I'd applied the stonewall texture to the MDF strips first before installing them in place which I just used some PVA glue. So I did begin doing some sample resin pours just to get an idea of how it's going to behave and also how any tints might work and there's quite a bit involved so what I've done as I mentioned at the beginning of the video is I've pulled that whole resin pour section out into a separate video and it just means that anyone who's just purely interested in the actual resin pour side of things is they can just focus on that particular video. So one of the things that I did of course come across when doing the tinting is I soon realized that the base of the canal that I'd treated with some spray paint in various colors was really too dark so I've gone over that again and lightened it up and sort of a deeper color in the middle and lighter around the edges. So of course one other thing that I did actually think of before I set about doing any resin pour in this reservoir was I kind of really felt the reservoir actually needs a little bit more infrastructure to potentially make it a little bit more convincing. So one of the things that initially came to mind of course was a reservoir would have some kind of grate over the entry point into the intake area that would stop debris and things like branches from trees or anything else that maybe people have thrown into the reservoir from ending up going down the actual intake itself and I also felt that maybe the actual intake for the reservoir would possibly have some kind of wheelhouse or some way of controlling where the intake could be actually shut down or closed off so I sort of felt maybe we need something along those lines as well in terms of maybe a little building or a hut that controls some kind of intake mechanism. So what I've done is put together a few more infrastructure components and they sort of vary so we've got the main intake component which I've recreated similar to the old one and of course the beauty of this is I was able to laser cut the components of this and create a much more accurate intake with nice smooth arches so that has been covered of course with a brick texture and the base of the structure of course is just some 3 mil MDF so it's as I said very similar to the old intake cover or housing that goes over the top of the intake. So in terms of a grate or something that stops debris from flowing into the intake area I've created this component here which I guess in some respects is a bit like a dam and it has of course a platform, a concrete platform 
or walking area on the top and then there is a grate applied over the top of this and this is made out of 1.5 mil card once again this is all being laser cut and so I was able to put this together pretty accurately I've yet to trim the fence peg off the underside of that that's still poking through and that is going to be placed in the mouth of the main reservoir intake area so the grate here I just simply pinch that from a bit of fencing and I think this is from the ratio range of fencing and it's just simply been trimmed down to create this grated area across here which will stop things like tree branches and other debris from flowing through so I'm going to weather this up a little bit and make it look a little bit more grimy and so forth to tie it in with the whole reservoir theme then I've created a platform as well now this is going to sit next to the intake reservoir area and I'll of course position all this stuff in here shortly so you can have a look to see how it's all going to work out. I had a stone cottage or stone shed from elsewhere on the layout which didn't have a purpose any longer so that is nicely going to be repurposed as a wheelhouse of some sort where possibly there would be something in there that would close off the intake for the water. So what I've also put together is a little bit of a connecting bridge type thing which is going to be positioned here and will actually cross over to the top of this intake. So this has actually just been made up of a bit of mesh which might be a bit hard to focus it on that. Yeah so there's a bit of a mesh base to that which I kind of thought might be what would be used and I've just used some H beam or I beam for either side that was just a bit of styrene product from the local model shop and the actual grill part is is just simply a bit of spare kind of grill I can't even remember where I got it from it was out of some appliance might have been a heater or something like that and I tend to sort of keep any items like this because I think oh that might come in handy and so it has come in handy I've actually doubled it up to actually reduce the fineness of the mesh so it's got two layers of the mesh that are offset from each other in order to create a slightly finer grid and then of course that's been spray painted so we'll pop these sort of temporarily into position because I'm going to do a little bit of weathering beforehand and you'll be able to just sort of see how it's all going to work and I certainly think adding this little bit of infrastructure certainly does help create the scene a little bit better. So there we have it, that's got the additional infrastructure into place and it's nearing readiness for the resin pour. So if you head over to the accompanying video which relates specifically to the resin pour, the resin product that I used, the tinting that was involved 
and also the sealing off of this reservoir in preparation for the resin to go in. So I'll leave it there for this video and catch you in the next one. So do take care everyone, look after yourselves, of course don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.